of Hamill, Illinois. They are a small family-run cat rescue in the Metro East, and I've long supported and cherished uh, them as friends of uh, ours and friends of um, my band and friends of uh, just the world and, and, and cat kind. Feed lined them. Um, you can find them at Caddyshack IL on Facebook and just click the donate button. Um, every dollar my friends or I have ever given them is going directly to feeding, medically treating, or adopting out actual cats in need. So be a part of the solution. Caddyshack in Hamill, Illinois. Donate, brag about it. Let's start the show. Our musical guest this week, a new thing we're trying to hold ourselves accountable for doing is having those weekly musical guests, which is why we missed last week, was we just had content we wanted to... We're just doing the content, baby. So uh, our musical guests this week are very, very good friends of mine. Uh, it's a family band of sorts. And uh, on guitar, you'll see myself and my friend Ryan. We went to high school together. We'll be joined by his mother, Sherry, on vocals, and his baby brother, Trey, on bass. Trey was my first ever guitar student. Um, later he helped me and his mom find her voice again. She was a pro, uh, musician with her parents singing back in the day. She, I think she was like Branson famous, like the show even like he, the real deal. He was like way younger than you, but he uh, went to high school with him. Which one? The guy on bass. No, no, no. The guy on guitar Oh, okay. was his brother, his older yeah. brother he was older than me, but no. Yeah. Trey's much younger than me. Um, they joined me for, I think we did four songs down here, uh, a couple weeks ago, just after we had Caroline and buddy on. And we're going to give you one here now and maybe at the end of the episode uh, if we have time. And then you can find two of those on our YouTube channel. So um, let's open up with that and kind of get a, as a palate cleanser, Joe. What do you say? Cleanse it. You want to cleanse palette. that palate? <laughs> last name but um i don't you know they that's a rare treat so if we um if we have time and if i'm feeling like risking the copyright flag we may play another song by them at the end of the show speaking of we are um going to launch a patreon what yeah <laughs> and we're talking about it right now um <laughs> in my head i'd like to have something out by this summer i'm not going to commit to a date on air because I don't know exactly what the, the next eight weeks is going to look like for me emotionally and, and economically and whatnot. It's going to be a time of uh, pursuits. But uh, it seems like the most natural next step in offering additional content to uh, the show is uh, Patreon. seems like it could be the best way to do that in an ad-free kind of space. So look for, for that. There's going to be a lot of... Um, I want to provide lossless quality uh, audio formats of all of the uh, original music we've released over the years. Um, I want to release some uh, old stuff that no one's heard in a really long time. I want to release new stuff that's going to be exclusive to the Patreon. And uh, we're shooting for this summer so that we can start backlogging some content so that there's not massive gaps um, for the paid uh, content. So we're hoping to mostly keep most of our guests and promotional type material on uh, this free public platform and then have some more fun stuff behind a very uh, moderate uh, paywall there. Uh, but again, um, just wanting to commit to it publicly so we can talk about it 
as it uh, approaches, but definitely by this summer, look for that. Joe, did you watch Godzilla vs. King Kong? I did. It's like they were making a very silly and expensive movie up as they went, albeit very enjoyable. Lots of fun. Yeah. I even like the weird ending going, um, I guess, planning to be entertained. And I guess I guess you will be. But obviously, I mean, do you want to talk about any of the problems you had with it? It's obvious that it's going to be kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah, it was very entertaining. But... I didn't see the last couple. I didn't see Skull Island and I didn't see Godzilla King of Monsters. I saw the Brian Cranston Godzilla Great one. Great. And I saw the King Kong with Jack Black in it, mm-hmm. which I think is canonical to this universe. Yeah, it is. It's... But apparently Skull Island was all about, it's all Hollow Earth theory. Yeah. Yeah. So it's we're just, we're just buying the whole, the Earth is hollow and full of mythical creatures. Yeah, we love physics. We love future physics. Cause they got over that really quickly. They got they got into the other dimension like it was nothing, sister. I mean, they had the little space thing. Well, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but again, I would watch it. I would steal your grandmother's HBO Go Max password and do that. Um, there was an evergreen barge full of shipping containers blocking the Suez Canal. <laughs> that was fucking great. Um, I bet you my fucking washing machine is on that barge still. <laughs> Yeah, I or I bought a washing machine months ago, and I I'm had just, a desk. There's a desk you're waiting on. That never came. Yeah, mm. they're We're in the canal, victims. brother. Yeah. Apparently, they moved it, so they got it out of there. Yeah, they, yeah, it's it's free now. We're all good. Great, you got to let it fly. Oh, little Nas X, uh, X gave Satan a laugh dance, and it shocked me, and I loved it. Well, I didn't think I could still be shocked. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. I don't really know the song all that well yet, but I but I hope to, and it makes me uh, um, yeah. There was a guy at my restaurant who came in, and he was like, and it was like the end of the day, and he says, before you come back to the table, watch the Lil Nas. You know, Lil Nas is like a really old man. Lil Nas X. Oh no. Video and come back, and I'm like, dude, what do you think I do back there? Do you think I'm just like you think I'm just sitting around off? watching videos? Yeah, is that what you think? <laughs> Seriously, why did he want you to watch it? Because he wanted to rant to me about it, which was also just really weird that he's like, take time out of your day. This I think it's gonna... so funny that that still bother that kind of stuff still bothers people because exactly. like Madonna is like seventy eight years old, dude. Right, so real. like that we've had that level of this kind. Of, I feel like that's this is on par with that. I feel like that's a natural evolution of that same kind of thing uh i don't know why they are so offended by this i'm like dude this the, have you seen i think it's TV? great that he's sticking it to puritanical mainstream culture but we also have to remember the homophobia he's up against in his own community being the black community that yeah. is something that he doesn't get talked a lot ab- about in media but it's definitely a, a problem I, I i witness all the time working in schools and um we have this uh image in our head as uh of evangelicals as like honkies like Mitt Romney but there's definitely a conservative religious community amongst African Americans as well there's that Christian branch like we have um locally and there's also you know uh, a Muslim branch or an Islamic branch I don't know what the preferred term is anymore I don't know what I'm allowed to say um but so I think I think when you're thinking about Lil Nas X you have to think about that too that that's something that he um I'm sure gets all kinds of hate from that wing of the planet, right? Yeah. Do you ever feel like though that homosexuality up on that microphone, motherfucker? Do you ever feel like though that like homosexuality and the LGBTQ plus uh, community is kind of being forced onto the black community? Jesus pretty heavily? Christ! Because like, if you go to the Black Lives Matter page, it's like all about trans rights. Oh Jesus! And don't you feel like that the African American community is probably like, hey, w- wait a minute, like you know? Do you ever feel like they ever wondered that? Um, I don't feel qualified to respond to that. <laughs> I mean, I just. Think about it, you know, because maybe that's why there's such a harsh uh, reaction, because they're like, yeah, you know, I am not I'm not going to try to imagine a a place where I could defend any level of homophobia. I'm not just I'm not going to entertain that. So pursue that, though, and we'll save that for one of your segments that my wife hosts. (laughs) where We try to get you canceled. Yeah, Yeah. that's definitely where you should take that. (laughs) Okay, moving on again. Note to self. Learn my fucking lesson. Oh, great. Another headline about a black dude. Uh, This is good. I'm glad Joe is doing this. To And I have to spell check it. You fucking. Oh, come on. You are a mess. That's a hard word. (laughs) Morgan Freeman, quote, if you trust me, you'll get the vaccine. That's from Consequence of Sound. Morgan Freeman posts video urging fans to get the vaccine for COVID-19. He doesn't mention which one. 
but the comment section of Facebook was mostly unhappy being told to take advice from the actor. I agree. Uh, one comment reads, didn't this guy F his adopted granddaughter? I didn't hear that. Another reads, it's not science that we don't trust, Morgan. It's big business being disguised as science. Rather shocking from a seemingly rational community of followers. So I don't know where you got that idea that any of these people were rational. These are people that are commenting on a Facebook post from a magazine that really was only made up to be a link to Facebook posts. That's really its whole thing. There's no consequence of sound on the street corner being sold. Consequence of sound is just they post a, a very short article surrounded by clickbait ads. And really, you just share the headlines. I can't remember the last time I opened one of these fucking things. <laughs> you totally so right. that's funny. Uh, I don't know why he keeps doing that. I want you to fix Joe's grammar. Um, so I don't know. I I have I just don't have enough information there. Why does Morgan Freeman feel like he needs to hustle a vaccine? Yeah. Um, looking at we got on the screen here. What do we got? Oh, uh, why should anyone trust a film celebrity for medical advice? I totally agree, especially one that's covered in spots. <laughs> He's not just. <laughs> One color. He's got blotches of all sorts of. He's a he's a cornucopia of freckles and potentially malignant growth. No, you cannot say that about Morgan Freeman. No, I mean he's a speckled egg. I love him. He's handsome. He's brilliant. He's the voice of of uh, the. I mean, he's literally the voice of God from my generation. And and uh, he's also speckly. I don't. I mean, I just. I just can't believe. So, I mean, I'm, I feel like so if many the people... vaccine cured all of his speckles, I would I would get the <laughs> same one he got. I, that's the other thing. He doesn't tell me what to get. I don't get his angle. Did the CDC say they'll listen to Morgan Freeman? Um, I just wish I had more information. Uh, no, nobody. I think he just this was. Yeah, obviously just something promoting him. I mean, you know, he just wanted to make a video. You guys need to go get the vaccine. And. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, people really... I was just surprised by how unhappy people are about... I don't know. Obviously about being told to do things by celebrities, but also, like, you know, based on what it seems like from my community, it feels like everybody's super pro-vaccine, and obviously I am. But Well, that's the thing, too, is I've gotten so over this lifestyle that I'm to the point where I'm kind of done asking questions. I mean, enough people have gotten the vaccine that I'm getting that... I'm like, I mean, at least I'll be dead with all of them. You know, right. I'd rather, I need <laughs> right. to be able to go back to the casino. I want to play music in a room with people again. Uh, I want to go to a restaurant. I want someone else to refill my Diet Cokes. And I want, I want to order two appetizers because of Liberty. But it's becoming like daily headlines, just like Paris Hilton in like 2000, early 2000s. You leave her out of this. Like it's being You daily. leave her out of this, you rat bastard. Well, like I saw this morning, it was like <laughs> Yahoo.com was like, um, Millie, what's her name? The girl from Stranger Things. Millie. Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby Brown got the vaccine, and it's like, okay. She was in Godzilla okay. versus King Kong. I know, but why is that news? You know, it's like, yeah, so so she got it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I don't like, know. I don't know that she should have qualified. She better be diabetic or something. I feel like the same thing. Like, yeah, what are you like, doing? She'd be fine. She's like fourteen. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It's it just, better just been the first part. I better be getting my second part before her. <laughs> right it's just funny to me Ghislaine Maxwell has finally been charged in federal court with sex trafficking of a minor which is a big deal because we didn't know if that was ever going to happen and I'm going to start writing her obituary now has, Gin has Ghislaine Maxwell gotten the vaccine let's see uh, I don't know she hasn't even had a mug shot I mean yeah. I'm assuming she's not eligible for bail but they haven't really I haven't seen her in court They've, I mean she could already be dead truly she got, she got the vaccine did she really federal jail source that those <laughs> i don't even know who i'm mad at i wouldn't want the vaccine if i was her no though. i mean i i wouldn't want it because i wouldn't i mean that's how they'd get you you're gonna let them stick you when you're on <laughs> yeah. when you're on the the clinton's hit list no let's get jislin maxwell the vaccine it's like no 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 let's i want to see that photograph <laughs> yeah right. i want photographic proof that she's in custody and still alive that's yeah. what i want i want her holding the paper and getting the vaccine and eating a bucket of chicken all at the same time, and then I'll believe it. Right. Joe, did you take, like, a career inventory assessment in high school? Yeah, we did. When I was in high school, we took this test. I think it's called the Missouri Connections now, which is probably what you took. Yeah, it is. Um, and it was supposed to point us in a career direction based on our aptitudes and interests. They told my buddy Mitchell he should be a ship captain. That's really cool. Like, I think I got business administration, which is weird, or what even is that? But 
uh, I feel like entrepreneurship was an option, and I didn't get that. So I don't really know. Like, I'm supposed to, I guess, manage somebody else's business. It's really funny. You're going to, I mean, this is really, really true, but they gave me school bus driver, which I felt. I think that. It was I, offensive. I think male school bus drivers are on their way out. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think we're going to have grown men driving children in buses for much longer. No. I think that's going to be a, uh, I hate to burst your bubble on that one. We should protest that. Um, I don't know about that. What? <laughs> Let Joe, us drive that is a slippery slope to a men's rights group. <laughs> Let us drive them. <laughs> Let me drive your kids to school. <laughs> Excuse me, family. My name is Joe. <laughs> I am an unemployed white gentleman, and I would like to drive your baby to school. I have a very short criminal record, and I'm going to wear a bright orange vest and Carhartt gloves. Dude, for real. I'm taking everything I have, and I think I'm going to dump it into merch, Joe. Hoodies, frisbees, money clips. Sweaters. Biracial fleshlights. I mean, what do you people want? Like, you're going to get it whether you like it or not. So let's try to pick something that people are actually going to use, right? Because I'm making something. We're going to put something on something. I just had a meeting with one of my branding guys. He's making us up a very beautiful logo that I'm very excited to reveal, hopefully in sync with the Patreon. And with some motherfucking merch. And we get merch services as a part of our agreement with Patreon that we've already started. So That's awesome. Um. <laughs> How do people contact the show to let us know uh, what we want, what they want merch wise? Because we're talking about hoodies. We're still talking about hoodies. I think we're going to do a pre-order for hoodies around the same launch of the Patreon. You can message us via Instagram or you can mm, send Instagram us email. at Jacob V Weekly. Yeah, we also have the Jacob V Weekly to, uh, at Gmail dot com. Jacob V I Weekly. That's L Y at Gmail dot com. That's dot C O M. Great. So let us know if you have a certain merch need. I know hoodies I'm really excited about because people love hoodies. My wife will wear a hoodie. She doesn't even know where she got it. I'll, I'll just get her a hoodie. If I'm at a show or something, this is pre-COVID, I would just get her the hoodie, whatever the hoodie was, as long as it was less than like 50 bucks, we're done. And our hoodie will be less than 50 bucks. And there will be a pre-order. And I'm really <laughs> excited about it. And I, I'm excited about the color options. I'm excited. I think... Um, uh, I have a lot of ideas, so I really like to use a, a local friend of ours to to make them and whatnot, um, and and so forth. So, contact us on Instagram is probably the best way. Obviously, hoodies. We absolutely want to do hoodies. Um, but if there's anything else, I used to go to this restaurant where that you could get nachos on a frisbee. It'd be like wax paper under the nachos, and you get to keep the frisbee. And that I like that. So fun. I know it was so fun. Yeah, we should figure out a way to ship nachos. No, 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 no. Oh. I fell for that one. What? I can't even. <laughs> Do you ever wonder about why, as a species, we didn't harness energy sooner and be like begin the run that we've been on, building this like oh. empire that revolutionized technology and human life? I was thinking about this this morning. Dude. I was watching in the background. I had the Battle of the Five Armies, mm -hmm. and I was just the you know at the beginning, Smaug is decimating this village, this lake village. I don't know anything about the Hobbit because um, I didn't read it and I didn't see the first two movies. I just saw Battle of the Five Armies several times. It's the best one. It's the best one. It's yeah. got some of the. I don't like the CGI orcs no, in the Hobbit series horrible, though. I awful. much prefer even the kind of racially insensitive chalky absolutely orcs from the Lord of the Ring trilogy, oh, but nice. nothing's perfect. Art is, you know, up nearly abandoned. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, they, if they made those movies now, it'd be lit because the Kong shit was the CGI they're doing. There is Incredible. just fabulous. That monkey had so much depth. Yeah. Can you, uh, I mean, for real, was there an actor in like a, a capture thing? Do you think it was all computer generated? There, let's see. I think it was. Go ahead. And you look an into that. Yeah. I was just thinking like, okay, so here's what happened is like uh, about a thousand years ago, England, you know, establishes their independence and over time they grow to, you know, uh, to be the empire they grew to be. And then they really like a face hugger from the Ridley Scott universe. They kind of upload, they kind of dumped their, their ambition and their essence into the new world and then so that kind of grew independent of them but as our, our dear friend who i won't mention my name told us on another podcast um 
there's it's really a, a marriage, right? A, a collaboration of rule between uh, the the United States Empire, uh, as 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 we're kind of talking about it, and what used to be the British Empire, right? Because the British Empire isn't really what it was. So I'm just thinking, like, so that's the trajectory, right? Somewhere at some point, uh, Great Britain uh, and the Great British Empire fell apart, but kind of unloaded into this crazy run we've been on in 200 years with the industrial revolution and, and the Americas. So what, why did that, why did that take so long is what I'm wondering. I think that all the time too. I mean, we really have only, why now? Yeah. I mean, think about, the think about how high my, my <clears throat> standard of living is like, yeah, I mean, if, if seriously, if I didn't have fresh ice in this fucking cup right now, I'd start losing it. By the way, can I get a refill? Yeah. What diet Coke? No, no, no. There's a La Croix in the mini fridge. <clears throat> Peach. You were just about to make a point, though. So can you hurry back? Yeah. I'm gonna wait right here. I think I, I think we're picking up the flip flop, the flippy floppy. I mean, so I'm just wondering, like, you know, oil. That, I think that's what I was thinking about. So I'm looking at, I'm watching Smaug decimate this this uh, village in uh, Battle of the Five Armies at the very beginning. So it's not a spoiler. And I'm thinking, all these people live in these wet, un climate controlled shacks thank you bubby uh on this lake i'm like are they just shitting into the lake that they all live on top of is your neighbor's shit just floating by your house all the time i was thinking things like this and i'm thinking like people lived like that for thousands of years they yeah. had fire they hunted for food and it was, um it was they maybe had tools and weapons if they were lucky they had metal tools i mean it was kind of communistic i mean it was slightly and then we get the, the the black alien goo out of the ground and we start making plastic and all of a sudden somebody else brings my wife nachos from that sweet barbecue place down the street like four times a week so good well, and i mean i got the climate controlled sister it's nice and cool in here bubby yeah what's the deal joe well and i think actually part of it kind of shows like we really are kind of living in the future but also we're not like think about the number of problems that go on with the house when you buy it like that kind of thing. We're still pretty primitive in that department. Like pipes are pretty fallible. Like, well, but... no, and that's one thing too is that like a lot of people. If your house is like a hundred years old, you're getting to the point where you may have to replace the clay pipe um, that's you know routed into your house because it's you know because it's old clay pipe. They do PVC and better stuff now that lasts a lot longer. But even a hundred years ago, like when my last house was built, I mean, it was that's the thing. So yeah, you're right. We're so close to when things kind of shifted into being more modern and more uh, uh, up to date. Yeah. Uh, but I was watching this horror movie once and it takes place yeah. as a period piece and she completely destroyed, like, so she gets, you know, raped and stuff. It's horrible, but Jesus she gets, Christ, Joe. it's called Hagaza. I think it's a German film, but she, she destroys the whole town just by throwing a, a, a sick rat into the lake. That'll do and it. That was it. And that and but so yeah, because of that's how easy it is to destroy a town, you have to realize that a lot of these like old communities were really pretty communist because they there was basically just like this kind of trust in the community where it's like, yeah, we could all kill each other in about two seconds, but you know what? We're not gonna do that. That's part of the thing you know? too, is like this community at the beginning of Battle of the Five Armies uh was on the brink anyway like the 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 master they called him their governor guy or whatever he was leaving with all the gold and then his valet got left behind and then the like the the dwarf that looked like antonio banderas was who killed the dragon no spoiler because at the beginning of the movie um is like gonna kill this dude but i'm like what is what is all what is all this what is happening why why are we all living? They're living on a lake. Where does the feces go? Is what I'm worried about. <laughs> right. They're worried, but where are the children going to live? I'm like, where's all your shit going? You were living on top of ankle deep water. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That's maybe it was flowing out. Maybe maybe all the shit flew out, but and they got the fresh water upstream. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know the science. I need to know. Are you monitoring the Facebook comments? No. Please be doing that. We need ever. We need all the help we can get. <laughs> <laughs> um so i was worried about that so i was worried about that i mean just think about like uh i was watching this dog a couple weeks ago at this beautiful home in webster uh we're gonna do a pre-order on the hoodies bubby don't worry about it i'm gonna let you know girl stay tuned they're not up yet sorry i don't know why i had to stop what i was thinking to respond to that i'm just very excited about the march but no i was watching this lovely house uh, a couple weeks ago. i was watching this dog that had this lovely house and they had an outhouse door like a decorative 
uh, as part of the had a nice old like outhouse door with the little moon shape in it. I'm like, God damn it. That wasn't even like a hundred years ago that normal people would go fucking shit in an outhouse. I guess more I guess more than a hundred now. It's nineteen twenty where we still shitting in outhouses. John uh Gilmore says read uh sorry, cover Bieber. So what's going on with Justin Bieber? No, he means I think musically he wants us to sing some Justin Bieber because we had a musical guest. Oh. Uh, and I think he yeah, was saying that makes but, more sense. Yeah. Yeah, cover the Bieber take. Cover Yo. the Bieber. What's the Bieber beat. <laughs> Haley Here, let's Baldwin. look it up. Let's hey. look it up. What is Bieber doing? Well, I, no, I have it up. That. It's up. It's this up. is what I'm saying, though. This brings us perfectly to our next point. We, I wanted to take a moment, Joe, and talk about ADHD. Oh, okay. Because it's something that you and I both have a lot of experience with. <laughs> ADHD is a spectrum. And you and me both sit in slightly different places on that spectrum. When I was a kid, I was diagnosed with ADD, and my brother was diagnosed with ADHD. This is... Uh, Attention deficit disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, I believe, is what we called them at the time. And again, this language has evolved over the years. It's all ADHD now. He never liked being medicated, and my behavior was more inattentive than hyperactive, so I never really needed the stimulants to get through school. I was doing so much better than him with just the staying engaged in school. So, like, nowadays, it's treated more like a special disorder than it was then. It was much more heavy-handed 20 years ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And he and I both have the real thing. He is textbook adult ADHD um, with that hyperactive manifestation. You know, like the chain smoking and the, the impulsive behavior and the hurrying and the whatnot. And I exhibit more of the uh, inattentive variety. Like you mentioned, it's kind of all the ADHD now with those kind of two caveats. Um, and I got tested again as an adult and got re-diagnosed. And uh, so I'm not being hyperbolic. I actually did the whole three-hour thing and had to fill out a questionnaire. Um, it's really good for me to know so I can manage it. And, uh, and I'm still not on a stimulant. Maybe I need one, but it just, you know, I've been doing so well without one. I'm trying not to just resort to pills for everything. Maybe that's immature and dumb. Are you vaping right now? It reminded me that I have ADHD. So I started vaping. (laughs) You're so good at it. I'm so bad at it. You're doing such a great job. So are you do you are you on a you have a prescription to treat your um me? Yeah. What? Shouldn't I not say that on the air? You uh so you got <laughs> elephantitis of the blowhole. <laughs> Joe, uh, what's your social security number? <laughs> oh <coughs> um you you're asking if I'm medicated with the nicotine. I'm just thinking like so many people say they have ADD or they have ADHD or that you know, blah, blah, blah. But I think just genuinely you, me, my brother and other people in my family really have a, a medical level of that sort of a, a and, you know, the the word disorder is so funny. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. It's so fucking annoying because really it's clearly just we're grown men that, you know, we're just like animals. We need like pastures and milk and we should be milk? running we what should be frolicking doing? around oh, and truly and truly we're, that's we're right. grown men we need we need milk <laughs> and grass <laughs> give me a thermostat brother what are you talking about no but for real we're actually i think we're just designed for a different type of society and like the world just is like no you need to sit down and look at screens and paper all day you know and like that's really the problem. Is that is a problem. Yeah. That last thing is definitely real. That's definitely. I don't know about needing milk and pastures, <laughs> but I do agree that our lifestyle is really unnatural. Yeah. And that uh, it's cer- certainly unwelcoming to. Here's my thing: is they're just trying to get everyone through it, right? With, with automating things. Exactly. No one's really wondering if you're quiet and well behaved and polite. They don't actually know if you know anything. Oh my gosh, it's a it's a curse to be like have good. If manners. you're if you're like um, if you've never been taught exactly what your goals are, and if you've never been taught to advocate for yourself, um, that too, and you're quiet and polite and you know mild mannered, then you're never gonna fucking get any of the the resources you need because everyone's gonna think you're good because you're not getting on their nerves. Curse of the white dude. No, 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 no. This is what, what does that mean? This is what I'm talking about with you. Oh my God. Somebody get me help. The white dude. I know plenty of white dudes that are, that are not polite or, or amicable. Amiable? No, Am- I do know. Amenable? Know. What are no. the, I know a lot of them have problems. You're just trying to trigger me with the things you say sometimes. Sometimes, like, I just feel like 
I just feel like trans rights are being forced on. What are you talking? Are you trying to get me shot in the street? <laughs> you guy. can sit here in front of the light and the camera next time, and I'll sit in the back in the dark and make ridiculous comments. <laughs> you savage. Uh, oh, now I can't pursue that any further. <laughs> My God. Um, I think I need to give myself permission to become more independent. I think that's really what I keep thinking when I keep, I, I, you know, we've talked about, um, I think I forced myself into a career where someone else would decide when my paychecks were going to show up and they would decide how much they would be for. And I would agree to that ahead of time. Um, I was avoiding the responsibility of, of that independence because I was afraid that I wasn't competent enough to support myself. I think that was my belief. Mm. I also don't like asking people for money. So I didn't want to have to close deals or secure payments. You know what I mean? Like if you're self-employed, you're your own boss, but you're also the one that has to eventually swipe the credit card or drop off that invoice or call somebody who forgot to send you a check or something. You know what I mean? And I've professionally never had to do that. And, uh, but no one I know who gave up the rat race to work for themselves has ever complained about that stuff to me. Um, I have <laughs> lots of role models who have developed their own living out of their skills. And I don't want to dox anybody, but, None of them bitch to me about their payroll. You right? They they certainly could. I'm sure they don't love the clerical aspect of of working for yourself. And I'm sure tax season like right now is a nightmare. But I don't have any evidence that that takes away from their actual quality of life. So I think I set up my whole like adulthood, which I had way too much control over, by the way. Uh, in a way that I was like, okay, I just want to avoid having to hustle to get the money in the bank. But you know, then True. I but then I really encountered this like. This futility and this, um, what's the word? Uh, monotony. Oh. Just this, mon I mean, just being in a really uh, challenging work environment, but not necessarily being driven passionately to like engage with it to, to a level where, I mean, it's just been, it's just been like creatively really understimulating. And I just, you know, I think I was sacrificing so much of that for that fear of being that independent. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure you feel like that. Like, I'm sure you're, I mean, you're, you don't feel empowered to just run out and start your own business. That's not your, that's not your plan for your young adult life. Cause it, cause it feels crazy. Yeah, it is. There's so much running around, but you know, the people I know that, uh, like know what the audience wants, like, you know, Danny Cravello's sister, who's Name just crushing dropping. it. Sorry. I mean, she's just crushing it with her, like, because she just knows she's somebody who's with pop culture so uh, deeply that she knows exactly what people want. And I mean, she just her. I mean, it's just going through the roof, the orders and everything she's selling. And so, like, there are people like so you're that. You're just thinking of like, like. I'm just not geared that way. I, I would want to sell people what I would want to sell them. But they don't need that, and and so yeah, that's yeah. that's an interesting thing. When you find something you really want to do, and then you realize the economy that you live in doesn't need it, right? You know what I mean? Doesn't demand it in a way that would be sustainable for even you know a moderate income. Yeah, um, that's really hard because that's like one time I told you about this one job I wanted and how I wanted it to pay X number of dollars, and your response was, "Well, then everybody would just do that." Right. There's a reason why I can't make X number of dollars doing that specific <clears> job. It's because I mean that would be. Why would I go do anything else? Great. We solved that. I think we're obsessing over absolutes. This is something you and I have talked about before, but as a culture, we spend way too much time looking for the finish line. Uh, I think I thought teaching, uh, getting a teaching job with benefits and a pension was like it, and it was not it. That is also not mean that the last 10 years of my life was a waste of time, but it's just not, um, I'm not going to, the next 10 years are not going to be exactly like the last 10. Um, They're going to be filled with, uh, shut up. Uh, love and I, I don't want to let the that obsession like upstage the experience like it's going to be what it's going to be whether you know what it is or not yeah mm. so whether or not you can identify what's happening those things are still going to happen mm. and i'm not disregarding the facts i totally live in details specificity is one of my favorite things i dive deep and i don't let details keep me from um doing things though right like you got to let yourself experience stuff, even if it's not all perfect. How many life affirming experiences did I ruin by getting too drunk, for example, before I quit doing that? Several. <laughs> I still experience those things. I've learned a lot. Remember that Rack and Tour show? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. I mean, one of the best so concerts good. I've ever been to. Oh my gosh. And I really only remember a couple of songs. And then I got ejected 
for rubbing my naked belly on somebody and then kind of falling asleep standing up. I'll have to find the uh, record recording I made of that. The record. The recording. Rack on. Anyway. We do. We obsess over absolutes. <laughs> I've learned that, uh, you know, I like myself more when I don't drink, so I've been trying that. And I can't just write off everything that happened before that. You know what I mean? I, I didn't really quit drinking until I was 29. Yeah, I and mean, I've always thought you should switch over to the speed department. Maybe I'm going to start snorting crank, little, brother. I mean, a couple gator tails. I I'm like going to I'm yourself. gonna take my heart out of my body <laughs> and I'm going to replace it with a fucking DeWalt car battery. <laughs> and we're going to go full tilt on the motherfucker. <laughs> I think that's the way you're your most of yourself, you know. So I, I think what I'm trying to say is even though I have regrets about how I did certain things, I'm not going to let myself n- not enjoy those memories or those those concepts. And bands are a great example. Um, I wish the Rolling Stones had just started the Greatest Hits tour in 1977. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Instead of continuing to make new music. I don't need Start Me Up. Some of their stuff, even in the 70s, was fucking awful. But Sticky Fingers is still a masterpiece. Yeah. Sticky Fingers is a perfect record with a perfect background and a perfect story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they did some other stuff later that wasn't as good. And that doesn't make it any less good. That's the thing, too. People always want to pick, like, one thing. People always want to say, um, sorry, you were Googling something and I got excited. <laughs> um, people always want to say, oh, who's, like, the best of the best of the I'm like, why? Because you get, you get them all still. I mean, if we're if we were if the conversation literally was we're sending one band's catalog to Mars, then we can have a conversation. But if we're just going to experience everything the way we're experiencing it, don't stress yourself out on something being perfect all the time. It's just not healthy. And you know, another great example: I wish I wasn't hungover at my wedding, but it was still the best wedding I've ever been to, and we pulled off an absolute masterpiece of a party. And being hungover also kept me from blacking out on the day of. So there's that. I'm not going to let that little imperfection spoil the whole day. It was too close to perfect otherwise. Mm-hmm. Right? I was a little nauseous in the morning. I needed a bean burrito. I was a little dehydrated. I couldn't really catch a totally decent buzz because I had caught such a heavy one the night before. And that's okay. It was a perfect wedding. We got great photos. Almost everybody that was supposed to be there was there. I mean, it was right before COVID. So it was like, it was just perfect. So, I mean, you know, do we, are we going to dwell on the fact that I drank like $300 worth of mezcal the night before? No, we're not going to bring that up. I really worry that I'm going to be fucked up. You know, I'm you're already fucked morning. up too late. Yeah. Damage is done. <laughs> we got it. All we can do is what are you talking about? I'm worried that on my wedding day, it's going to be just like, I'm not going to be feeling it. I'll be like, you know, this is really great. No, we'll prep. Day. We'll prep. It's really, you prep all week too. It's good. It, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And we'll eat really clean. We'll do high fiber. <laughs> really keep your regular we really want to stiffen up those bowels but we don't want to block you up you know what i mean you want a firm girth <laughs> yeah um i was i had this thought the other day speaking of adhd do you think jews and muslims see christianity being like the new testament do you think they see that the same way that we as like traditional christian americans see like mormonism and scientology yeah, I kind of early debunked that though because they really they acknowledge that Jesus was a person and they like the New Testament. They just choose not to. It's kind of a footnote in there. But isn't belief. that's kind of like how we feel about Mormons because we have Scientology and and crazier newer stuff. Mormons don't seem that crazy, but Mitt Romney's grandfather moved to Mexico because he he wanted to have several wives, and that right. wasn't that long ago. Yeah, the Christians don't have any type, like part of their lifestyle that make it like that make it. Don't there's crazy Christians. We just don't have them like around here like that. We yeah. talked about this um, on our last episode when we were talking about um, schools in St. Louis and and the whole um, classism thing associated with that. I mean, we have like a Hasidic Jewish community here, um, and it's not necessarily the same. And, and like the Catholic community we have here, I don't know that there's like a monastery of Catholic monks or friars or what have you. But I just wonder, like, if your religion's been around for six thousand years, 
and mine's only been around for 2000. Do you look at, do your people look at my people and think like, uh, what are they even doing? They think Jesus was magic. I think I was thinking about this cause it was Easter. It was Easter right. the other day. That's why I was thinking this. Yeah. With the eggs. They were, egg- Oh, I dyed yeah. some eggs girl. And I had like, probably, I think I ate a dozen deviled eggs easily. Jesus died some lives from himself. He died. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know if I can keep any of your audio. I think all of your audio is not going to make it. It's going to be me in, in the room with myself. <laughs> with some, it's going like, to be like fuzzy. Clint Eastwood's show with the chair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think they actually, I don't think the Jews see us as that wild because we're the majority. So I think because of that, they see, I think they see their uh, belief system and their culture as more of a club. Like they're like, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely a nod to people who acknowledge uh, Jewish beliefs and uh, and themselves. Keep that going. Do not stop talking. <laughs> Don't stop talking about how the Jews Talk about are in a club. Your faith a little bit. Talk about your background with uh, you know the alt right. Yeah. So well, I am part of the alt right, and I think. The most important thing to remember about the alt right is that, um, you know, we're not like, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, we were here first, but, you know, oh man, <laughs> um, yeah, I just think the most important thing is that we keep American patriotism, you know, as the key part of our culture. All this other news about, you know you know, this, you know, these other people, you know, having a voice is just kind of complicated to me, you know, and uh, we definitely should cut this. It's the only way through is we have to normalize the pee break. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, I was going to rush the end of the show. I was going to make it sloppy and we just have to normalize <laughs> the pee break. I had in ears in. I don't know where those went. I just kind of ran out. Um, Joe, what did I miss? You told him you're you're an alt right extremist. I was talking about how you know I think you know we were here first, and you know it's like who? I mean, you know who? And how, I mean, you know no and, who? Uh, who was here? Where? You know the, you know the people who didn't go to you know Miami Golden Tan, you know, you know kind of the lighter skinned people. <laughs> no, I think you guys are the aliens. <laughs> right. Did you see Prometheus? I did see Prometheus. Those aliens were white. They were. Those were some white aliens. Yeah, you know, and that was... You Don't, know, please be careful. Ridley Scott was kind of fucked up for that, wasn't he? You know, he really should have... He shouldn't have made them like Caucasian, you know, people. Um, I mean, yeah, they were super white. Yeah, I was really surprised by that. And, and so the, it just makes you think that did the aliens come here... And reproduce with with you know lower hominids, and yeah. then and and ex- accelerate our evolution. Um, lower what hominids? <laughs> what was a little rough, Joe? So guys, uh, again, we have all of our musical guests that we've recorded so far. They have bonus content. They record many more than just the one song we typically air. Um, So those are all on our YouTube channel. You can find me on YouTube at Jacob V. We're going to wrap up this week of Jacob V Weekly. Please go on to the YouTube and the Instagram and find the content we've been posting and updating there. Contact us about March on the Instagram if you have an idea for something you'd like to see us offer. But hoodies are definitely coming by this summer with the Patreon. So look forward to announcements and more specifics on that. And uh, follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google, whatever. But don't forget, uh, this week our, our big thing is we want you to go out and support Caddyshack in Hamill, Illinois. Find them on Facebook at Caddyshack IL. Don't be a pussy. Oh, good one, Joe. You can find original music by Jacob V on all your musical platforms. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. Go ahead and bang it. 
I also curate a monthly playlist on Spotify since May of last year. I have one for each month. Our 11th one is up right now. Jacob V's favorite songs, April 2021. Updated frequently throughout the month. We did it. Jacob V Weekly. Be safe.